Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of Random Chatter on the show today. We are going to talk about the things that we've seen recently, including things that you should definitely check out, things you should avoid seeing at all costs, and some things you might want to give a second thought to, including some visits to local theaters. We're going to talk a little bit about that too. Um, Tim is not with us tonight, Lizzie is not with us tonight, and this week we have such a slow news week that we're just going to forego the news entirely. It is just going to be the review episode this week. I'm Eric. I'm here tonight with Lulu. How you doing? I am doing well. All right. Thank you for asking. So let's talk stuff. Let, let's let talk what we've been seeing, what we've been doing over the last week. Two weeks for me um, because I wasn't here last week. That's right. That's right. You weren't. Yeah. Um, and, you know, and I'm trying to think about what I've seen this week that I didn't talk about last week because I haven't really watched a lot of new stuff. I'm catching up on things. Okay. Was there anything I big from mention... last week that I would like to hear about that stood out well, to you? Well, something I mentioned last week, I think, and I'm, I, I, I finished it finally now so I can talk about it now. Um, I finished The Gifted, that, that oh, series yeah. on Fox from like two years ago. I never ago. did finish that. <laughs> You know, I, I realized I had episodes on my DVR, and I'm like, you know what? I'm going to finish these. I'm just going to buckle down and get the last five or six episodes out of the way. Yeah. Um, and yeah, I was happy I did. I'm glad I, I got to see the finale of the season, uh, the the series. Uh, I I liked the gifted. I don't know how you felt about it, but I thought it was. A I good liked. Series. I've always liked the mutants and stuff, and I like the fact that they brought back some that we've seen in the comic books. I've always been a big fan of uh, Blink, um, from the comics. Okay. And I liked the iteration they used of her in, in the series. Um, so what was, without giving any spoilers, not that the audience would care, but I do care because I actually will finish it. Was the mm -hmm. ending fulfilling or was it another cliffhanger? Was it? Um, a little bit of both, I think, okay. really. I mean, I, I liked the way they did it and it, it was, you know, it, it was satisfying. I okay. thought it was good. good. Okay. Good way. And, and the, uh, and the series on, and when, when, you know, Gube ended when I know they didn't really intend on ending it there. Yeah, They didn't know, you know, you know, they only got what, two seasons, I think. Yeah. Was that two they seasons. Had total? I think. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I, but no, I thought it was a good ending. So that one there, I cleaned up my DVR. I'm, I'm working on clearing off shooter, which I, mm. Um, yeah. again, from 2018, um, the second season of that, which I think was the final season of that show, show as well. Uh, Ryan Philippe was the, uh, the main actor in that. Um, but yeah, I, I, I thought it was a good continuation from the movie and I'm still working through the last few episodes of that. But, uh, um, so yeah, my, my, um, my project now has been project DVR, clean off the old stuff that's been on there for, you know, <laughs> two or three years yeah. now sometimes that I'm like, I'll come back to this at some point. So um so yeah so that was that for new stuff there i finished reading the book rage um that was the bob woodward book on trump oh yeah um, what'd you think without getting good. into it was, politics it was a good but, book okay no no and and i didn't read it for the political aspect of this even though it's a political book i really wanted to know because there was a bunch of stuff in there on on covid19 and starting out and kind of who knew what when and, and what was going on um, so for me, that part of the book was fascinating um, because, you know, you had people like, um, you know, Redfield and Fauci talking about how uh, their thoughts on what was going on and what we should be doing back in January, um, you know, before the stuff really became a problem right. um, here in the U.S. And um, it, it made me also think that, you know, down the road, I really want to read a book that somebody writes on the whole the whole COVID-19. Um, <laughs> the making you know, of COVID-19. Well, yeah. But, but I mean, I mean, I, I find that kind of, and not to be no pun intended, but you know, the, the postmortem of something like this yeah. and, and, you know, who knew what, when, what happened, where, what happened in China, what the, the, the thought processes were and, and, and what they, um, what they knew and what they didn't know. Right. Um, and, uh, you know, some of the theories now is that, you know, China knew a lot more than they let on and could have stopped things a lot earlier and didn't because they felt that if they didn't, if they stopped it when it was just affecting China, it would have put them at a severe disadvantage on the world stage. Mm. So they're, the thought process now is they, they let it get out of China to let the whole world be disadvantaged. If I have so to put up with it, you have to put up with it too, that sort of thing? Ex exactly. So yeah. it has it, been documented not, but. early on that there was a scientist in China who had discovered that so COVID-19 had been identified for a couple of years now in the sense that there's a, a team that identifies diseases in animals that 
are able to cross over to humans but haven't yet. So this scientist okay. apparently in China saw that it had crossed over, tried to alert the government, tried to get them to sound the alarm and contain it, and the government chose not to. And then I guess there was a whole big to-do about it. And then he ended up um, contracting COVID-19 and dying. And this was all back in like February or so. Mm. So um, it there does seem to have been some record of China could have done more and didn't. Now, as far as why, I don't know. I, I guess, yeah, I mean, that's know. a possible... Yeah explanation i don't know well it, it was one of the things that they said in the book was that at the same time when they had locked down uh, the wuhan province um to stop the the spread of it within china they didn't stop people from china leaving the country mm. and then it was getting out of the borders of, the, of china in general right. not just you know locked down in the city so it, 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 you know interesting book i think uh, bob Woodard does a good job of uh, blending, you know, fact with, um, I'm sure some of his, you know, prejudices and some of his beliefs in the book, but for the most part, he's a reporter doing, doing factual, um, yeah. you know, research and, coming and he's kind of the answers old school. What he feels there. So I, I kind of feel like well, he at yeah, least he's, tries to be I mean, as objective mm -hmm. as reasonable. Nobody's a hundred percent, but I mean, I mean, of course not. Yeah. But I mean, this is Woodward from Woodward and Bernstein back in, yeah. Uh, with the Nixon administration breaking the Watergate scandal. Right. So um, he's got a history of doing this. And I think this is the second book on Trump he's written. It's yes. the first book that Trump gave him access to him. Right. He had because Trump didn't care that much for the first one. 20. And so right. Trump tried to be more yeah. proactive with this one. It, it was interesting. There was some insights the book gave you on, on Trump in general uh, from people that have been around him, you know, good and bad insight into Trump. And, it makes you understand things a little better. I think sometimes yeah. when you think about what you see and what we hear and then you read into what this book talks about, it's like, okay, now I can see why he said that or why he's doing that. Not that I agree with, you know, the book or with Trump, but right. yeah, it's just a matter of, you know, your own personal opinions on that. So, but you know, he's, but he's yeah, a no, human was, being. A and book. I think that sometimes we, a lot of times, whether it's celebrities, world leaders or whatever, we, we tend to elevate them into the status where there's something superhuman like they're above mm -hmm. human and the reality is he's just a guy and so learning yeah. why he makes the decisions he does and what he's been through and what affects his choices and stuff sometimes that can be insightful and to get back to what you said about the port the postmortem i mean that's something that's even done professionally in emergency management is anytime there's a crisis whether it's a hurricane or a pandemic yeah. or a terrorist attack or anything there's always an uh an after action report um time yep. frame where people yep. go back and, and look at, okay, what happened? Could it have been prevented? Did we address it correctly as it was developing in, in sounding the alerts? Did we have the mm -hmm. right response at the right level of response at the right time of response? Did we have right. the right recovery period? Um, and then the, the rebuilding and restructuring period after that, like there's a, a very specific process that, people go through for mm. assessing that sort of thing. It's always good to do a postmortem. And yeah, I'd be really curious once this is all said and done and it's not done and won't be for a while. Right. Um, right. Oh yeah. I'd, yep. I'd like to go back and well, see. It, yeah. Well, you see, it's even like, I mean, there was a book written on, well, I mean, we are, we're probably all aware of the movie outbreak. Mm -hmm. uh, there was a book written about that beforehand and more of a factual kind of what was going on in certain areas. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, it's like, the the author of the book, I remember talking about the movie saying, no, I'm not going to be involved in this because the stuff I wrote about, the real stuff is scary enough. You don't need to make it, you know, you don't need to embellish it for the movie. Yeah. Because, <laughs> I mean, you know, the, the, there was a, in that book, you're, I mean, you read this back in the 90s, 90s, I guess it was, you know, we were pretty close to a pretty large Ebola outbreak in Reston, Virginia. Um, That's right. Within about a day and a half of really getting out and doing, I, doing I lived in Reston, but... Virginia. Oh. Not that I did it. <laughs> Not that way. Wait, wait a You're minute. Oh, hold on here. <laughs> yeah. Did you have a pet monkey? Um, I mean, we dressed it up like a dog, but, <laughs> but yeah, no, I, I find, I find factual books about that kind of stuff. Fascinating. Yeah. Because it's, it, 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 you know, hindsight's twenty twenty, and it's just good to look back at things and see where, what happened. And, you know, I, I mean, I, I didn't appreciate history when I was in school taking history classes, but 
now after the fact i i love reading history stuff now yeah. so cool um otherwise um well for for movie chatter we i watched us with you guys yes. last week we talked about that on movie chatter that was a it was funny because i think we all came out of that episode and, and not to spoil but you should you should listen to our episode on us because uh i think we all went into the episode thinking one way at the movie and came out of the episode thinking differently about what we felt about i, the movie I agree we i mean we it. definitely whether our minds were changed and whether we liked it or not and some were we all definitely went out of it thinking differently than we went in. Mm -hmm. It does not happen often. Mm -hmm. No, no, it not doesn't. just through the course of sitting through a recording. So that was interesting. Yeah. I like recordings yeah. like that, though. It, it, it's fascinating. Yeah, because yeah, you fun. evolve as the recording evolves, right? Yeah. Um, I am playing Squadrons, as I know you have picked it up as well. You're getting ready to uh, play that as yep. well. So Star Wars Squadrons from EA is out. Um, I picked it up and of course had to, you know, download updates for updates for updates. You have to put the disc in, mm. <laughs> which is part of Did you get course. a physical copy? I okay. did. Yeah. I got the digital download and I'm thinking, okay, it's going to like, I've got an hour and 10 minutes before we record tonight. It's going to take me 20 minutes to download. I can at least get in and no, no, it, it did not. It downloaded. Well, I think finished while we were doing echo base. The, yeah, so I, I put the disc in and it took it 35 minutes just to copy it to the hard drive mm -hmm. and then probably another hour to update <sighs> the system and the game. And I'm like, <sighs> okay, whatever. Yeah. But that's, that's the price you pay for games. These days. And, and that's what, you know, I'm looking at the new PS five coming out and there's two versions, right? There's digital version only and a, a, a version with a hard drive. Right. It, and, and I still want the hard drive version cause I can, buy copies and sell them back as used, even if you don't get a lot of money back for them. Um, well, but, you can while GameStop still exists. True, true. Yeah, that may not be an option much It longer. would not break my heart if they didn't exist <laughs> anymore, but that's a whole different you. discussion. A, yeah, I hear you. I hear you. Um, but yeah, something about physical media that I still think is... You know, I, like having I still feel that way, and yet I keep crawling further and further away from physical media. I have not bought a DVD in years. I've not bought a CD in probably a decade. Um, in video games, I tend to more and more get the digital downloads instead of the discs. I don't know. I've done some digital downloads recently, and every time I do it, I always feel like ah, I should have bought the disc. Yeah. Yeah. I think what really got me started on it was the Nintendo Switch and my son because like we no, both bought a man, game no... and then he lost his cartridge so we wanted to borrow mine then he lost my cartridge because they're the size of an SD card and I'm like right, yeah no we're right. di only digital for you from now on and then I started just doing the same thing yeah and I guess it's the mind, mind process of getting over the fact of you're not going to own anything anymore you're going to own the rights to play it yeah. Um, and then, you know, I mean, isn't there a new subscription based Xbox now where they want you to pay it's 30 bucks a month for the game, for the system, basically forever? I've heard mixed things. Yeah. So, I mean, you know, that's just another step in this evolution we're getting into yeah. how we're consuming media what we're getting products wise how you're paying for things i, I don't know yeah uh, textical pointed out in the chat room again that uh, i think we'd mentioned this a couple weeks ago but uh, vinyl is now outselling cd for the first time in history yeah um, yeah right which i yep. think it's kind of funny there's been a big resurgence in vinyl though for uh, like audio files who get there like really been. expensive yep. systems and yeah, because for those who don't know, um, CD, when they compress the audio to make it digital, because any sort of mm -hmm. digital um, conversion, technically you lose something in that conversion from analog to digital, and it's compressed in some right. way. So what they do is because people traditionally can't hear anything over, um, I think, technically 22 kilohertz. Most people can't hear above 20 kilohertz and can't hear anything below um, 18 to 20 hertz they consider that just garbage data, so they just cut it out. But um, I don't know that much about this, but apparently, though, there are, you can't necessarily hear it, but you can pick up on the harmonics and vibrations and stuff mm -hmm. of, of things above and below. And so... I heard that somewhere recently, that too. That reproduction... The feel of the music is different. Right. 
Right. And, and so there is something to be said about, um, about being able to hit those other frequencies and reproduce them in a stereo system. Yeah. So, yeah. and even the stuff in between is cleaner because it's not being, there, there's no artifact and there's no compression at all. It's just raw analog audio. Exactly. So, right. Anyway, that, that's a whole nother thing. Um, okay. So any, anything else of note that, that that's pretty much it. Um, I've been kind of going through, um, still working through Dan uh, Dance with Wolves, Raised by Wolves, <laughs> um, which I'm still enjoying. Um, I, I I like the feel of it. I like the the unknownness of it. I guess I think um, I'm I'm just fascinated by that by that storyline. I'm yeah. taking my time going through it because I want to make sure I can understand the nuances and really get a feel for the series. So I'm glad to hear it's been picked up for a second season already. Um, but, um, it, it's, it's a definitely interesting show. I've been watching that too. I'm only on, I think the second episode, I'm about to start the third and it's hard for me because I have to not be distracted. I have to be able to sit down and actually pay attention to it because you don't want to miss right. anything. And especially Ridley Scott too, because he is very specific about how things are framed, the cinematography, and he wants certain things done yeah. certain ways. So if you're not actively paying attention to a Ridley Scott film, or in this case, television production, even though sometimes the pacing can be up and down, you're going to miss some things. Oh, yeah. And this is one of those ones where I can't be doing anything else. I've got to be focusing just on that right. because there's so much in it. It's so rich. Yeah. Um, and I've actually gone to watching the episodes a second time with the closed captioning turned on so I can make sure I don't miss any of the text. Mm. Yeah, I just leave um, them on now. Because the dialogue. I figure yeah, me it's, focusing it's, and paying attention more closely is a bigger time saver than me kind of halfway paying attention and then having to go back and rewatch everything a second time to get everything I missed. So. Yeah. 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 But otherwise uh, that's it really. I'm just gearing up for Halloween movies now. Yeah. So. Well, I've missed two weeks and I've seen a lot recently. So my list is going to be a little more long winded. So I, I apologize. Sure. Um, speaking of Halloween movies, we do have to, figure out what else we're going to cover. So next up on movie chatter, we are covering um, the invisible man. And then we talked about maybe covering scream. And then I thought we we're doing happy death day. No, weren't we doing no, that didn't actually make the list. We had decided on the, the new version of the, the invisible man, the one that came out in 20 late 2019. Okay. Yeah. Uh, yep. With Kate Moss. So that's the first okay, one we're yeah, doing. Yeah, I, I know it's on my list to watch. I thought that, Hmm, okay. Yeah, no, that, that's the next one we were supposed to be doing. Um, I know that because uh, Robin basically made me read it back to her while we were on the air to, to confirm <laughs> um, because she's like, not the old one, the new one. Yeah, well, well, we may need to catch up because yesterday she texted me. She says, are we covering both Happy Death Day movies or just one? We weren't actually slated to cover any of them. We had talked about them, but we're, <laughs> they're not on the list. <laughs> Well, she threw it at me yesterday. It's why. Ay, Dios <laughs> okay, so. okay. Well, see, she needs to include okay. me in these texts, Lou. Well, I, I thought Robin. it was a random chatter group text. But no, I guess it wasn't. It wasn't. So. Okay, well, then Oof. we will. Well, what time of night is I'll, it right I'll, now? Uh, it's, uh, she's going to work tomorrow. I'll, I'll be nice and not text her until tomorrow, but no. So the slate was, um, it was going to be, now I'm all confused. The Invisible Man, then Scream after right. that. And then I was supposed to watch The Hunt by then to see whether we wanted to do The Hunt. That's the Damon Lindelof Blumhouse movie from last year. Oh, yeah, yeah right, right. Yep, and yep. Um, she had talked about Happy Death Day, but I didn't know that anybody actually wanted to cover. I'm OK covering it. I liked it enough. Yeah, I haven't seen either one. I want to see them. So, so you should watch it, it regardless. Fine. I haven't seen the second one yet. Yeah, it's on my list to watch, so I'm definitely going to see okay. it. But... All right. So I will make sure I watch. We're going to have to get um, that all squared away then. Invisible Man. But yeah, As they say we in Britain, we're going to have to get it sorted. We need a list. We, we do. We need a queue. We do. Again, British. Keep, keeping yeah. the. Very, very. Yeah. yeah. And they're we very need to get our queue sorted. Yeah. Th there's our, our episode title, I guess. Um, <laughs> get our queue sorted. Our queue yes. sorted. Yep. All right. So. Um, we mentioned um, Star Wars Squadrons, uh, the only other gaming yep. update. I've still been 
trickling back into Minecraft dungeons. I, I still enjoy that a lot. Okay. Um, so movies, the elephant in the room. Since I recorded last on, on this show anyway, I've been to the theater twice. Wow. Uh, You're a brave man. Well, I figure I can't, I mean, I had it once. I, it's not like I'm going to get sick again. Did you actually have COVID? Um, so I have to actually go get an antibody test to confirm it. But the physician I spoke to was completely convinced that I did have it. And okay. it, it's a, it's a long drawn out story without getting into too much medical history detail and stuff. But I have every reason to believe that I did have it. And that due to the way my test was done, it was done improperly, which resulted in a false negative and blah, blah, blah. There's a whole thing. Anyway, if you look at the symptomology, the progression of the symptoms over the time period of which I was sick, et cetera, um, the, the people I've spoken to in healthcare are completely convinced that that is the case. And then I had it. And even so, okay. just in case, because if I didn't have it, I definitely don't want to then go get it. So I still right. am actively wearing a mask. I'm still social distancing. To my knowledge, I can't get it and I can't give it to anybody else. So I'm like the safest person well, in the room. It's still, but, still up in here too because they don't know what the level of antibodies you really true. need to keep yourself from getting it or how long they last. That's, so that's the catch, how long they last because there are keep, a lot of cases. Keep, keep protecting yourself. Yeah. With virology, sometimes you have antibodies forever and sometimes they'll stick around for a few months and then they'll go away again. They mm -hmm. think that COVID might be one of those things. But mine's been recent enough that even then, I mean, I probably have a window of a couple months where I'm probably safe probably being the key word and i have a rule you never gamble what you're not willing to lose so i still do the social distancing i still wear a mask everywhere i go um i still use hand sanitizer i carry hand sanitizer with me in my pocket everywhere i go and the theaters i went to they had reserved seating when you booked the seats okay. there was, they cleared out an area around you um and both times it was almost nobody in the theater um, when we went yesterday, um, there were two other groups in the theater and this was a Saturday night at like a seven o'clock showing two other groups in the theater sitting nowhere near us, okay. like six foot distancing. No, we're talking like 28 foot distancing or something like just nowhere near us. <laughs> nice. So first I went to go see Tenet and okay. Uh, we talked a little bit about this on Movie Chatter. I won't rehash the whole thing, but here's the takeaway on Tenet. I think it's one of Christopher Nolan's best films. It will be better on a second viewing, not surprisingly. Mm -hmm. The concept is brilliant, a little difficult to understand, and there is a lot of exposition. The problem with the movie is the sound editing is horrible. And I won't get into the entire explanation again. I go over it on movie chatter, but this isn't one of those situations where the movie theater itself just messed it up. You get on the internet and look up audio mixing and tenant Just do a Google search, tenant audio mixing. It's horrible. You, that big booming bass noise wow. you get like during an explosion or something that makes your chest vibrate. Imagine that bass mm -hmm. note being held for like three and a half or four minutes and my throat was vibrating in three different times during the movie. And so oh, th th this bass going on over top of dialogue, you can't understand what the people are saying. And then Kenneth Branagh and a couple of other people have accents that I can make out what they're saying. Other people have had some difficulty. But then with the additional right. audio, I had a hard time making out what they were saying some of the times, too. It was it was so badly mixed. I'm legitimately surprised that they allowed it to be released like that. Like it's a problem well, yeah. with the audio mix. Yeah. I, I was just going to say, I mean, I remember you talking about this on, on movie chatter and it makes me wonder how does something like that get released? I don't understand. How does that get past people and say, yeah, let's, let's go to print with this. Let's set this out. I mean, the only thing I can think is that when they did the audio editing, they did it using equipment that does not reflect what would actually be in the in the theaters and probably because there were no screenings of it. They mm. didn't do any test screenings. There was no way to. Yeah, no way to they see didn't do any press any releases ahead of time. Right. So they didn't do it in the environment mm -hmm. in which it's going to be seen. So there was no last minute chance for someone to say, hey, dude, like, let's let's fix that. Yeah. 
you know, either that or the guy in charge of that was getting ready to do everything and he forgot to save it before he sent the file out. <laughs> you know, hey, I got all this stuff done. And, oh, Maybe he was oh, editing oh, on Windows instead out. of on a Mac. Oh, yeah, I went there. Yeah. But anyway, I, dark real fast. I, I hope that yeah. they fix it for home release. And if not in your home theater, even if you do have the capability to do a lot of bass, you can always turn that down yourself and fix it. Sure. It is an incredible movie. But if you're worried about, oh, I really wanted to see it on the big screen in the theaters. If they don't get this audio mix fixed, don't bother. So okay. the other movie I saw, we went to see Save Yourselves, an independent film. So independent that the credits started rolling. I checked my phone real quick to see if there's anything after the credits because I have an app called After Credits. It wasn't even included in it. We went to stand up, walk down to the end of the aisle and looked up and the credits were done. That's how independent wow. a movie this was. Okay. Wow. So, but it was, it was good. It was clever. It was, um, kind of funny. And the, the premise is this young couple, like, um, I don't even know if they're engaged yet. They're like pre-engaged, I guess. And, uh, okay. yet they, they live together and all that. And, they decide they're, they're fed up with always being connected all the time and how it's af adversely affecting their relationship. And they cut themselves off from social media. They leave voicemails on their phone saying, hey, we're going off the grid for a week. We're not checking emails. We're not checking Twitter. We're not checking Facebook. We're not checking messages. All of that. They turn their phones off. They go to a friend's cabin out in the woods for a week. And that's it. And they're trying to reconnect with themselves. While in the meantime... um these things start dropping from the sky, but they're off the grid. So they don't know what's going on until they see this little cute poofy thing that kind of looks like a Tribble from Star Trek. All of a sudden, just <laughs> sitting in the middle of the cabin. And she's like, did you bring that in here? And he's like, no, I don't, I don't know what that is. And she's like, well, it looks like a little poof. And he's like, well, I guess it's poofy. She said, no poof, like a little, like an Ottoman, but like smaller. And so, and so they get in this whole side discussion about furniture and they walk away and whatever. Yeah, well, it turns out it's a little alien and there's an alien okay. invasion that happens while they've been completely off the grid. And so when they kind of clue into what's going on, now they try to get back on the grid. And of course, they're like they're panicked. They can't reach anybody. Their family's evacuated to a boat somewhere. They're out in the middle of okay. the woods and, and things just kind of get crazy from there. So um, I, I think the writers painted themselves into a little bit of a corner at the end of the movie, but. I mean, mm -hmm. I don't know how I would have written my way out of it either. Sounds like a fun, fun. Um, it was fun story, though. I yeah. mean, you know, you think about that and, you know, hey, I'm going to go backpacking out in the woods for a couple of weeks or whatever and just do my commute with nature thing. And you come back and all of a sudden it's like, whoa. Yeah. What happened here? Yeah. And it was it was good, too, because the dynamic. These were both unknown actors. Their dynamic was really good, too, and their relationship, it's one of those relationships where it wasn't dysfunctional in the sense they hated each other or anything. It was dysfunctional in the sense that they both loved each other a lot, but none of the, like, neither of them know what to do in the woods. Neither of them know <laughs> what to do even in a cabin. Um, they're practicing, That's like, funny. how quickly they could evacuate if they have to leave the cabin. Like, the, it, all of it was just a mess. They're both completely incompetent when it comes to anything outside of city life. And so it was that kind of dysfunctionality as opposed to like a more negative uh, personality type of, of issue. So it was fun to watch that dynamic too. So it, it was good. Again, it's called Save Yourselves. Again, with COVID, I, I'm not recommending you go out to a theater to see it, but I'm sure it's going to hit home video pretty soon. Um, okay, so some of this I'll lightning round through. I've been catching up on Superstore, Star Trek Lower Decks, um, I just started the morning show on Apple, uh, Apple TV plus. I've heard mixed things on that. Uh, so far it's pretty good. So it, it's a little, okay. You've got two main characters with anger management issues and another main character who is, um, apparently, uh, at least so far, I'm only three episodes in, but kind of a perpetrator in the whole me too thing. Okay. So, who do you like? Who do you not like? You don't really know. So it's a little rough in that regard, but it's really good. It's really well written. Um, and then are you familiar with Masterclass? Uh, yeah. Okay. Yep. So 
I don't I haven't seen anything from it, but I know what it is. Yep. There's a website out there where you can sign up for a year long subscription. It's $180 a year. And you can have Samuel L. Jackson give you acting lessons. You can have Ron Howard give you directing lessons. You can have Neil Gaiman give you writing lessons. Um, nice. My favorite so far, the, I've only been through part of, this is the first one I started with, is Penn and Teller teaching you oh, wow. how to do different magic tricks and also how to perform in magic and, and the art of misdirection and the okay. art of storytelling through magic and stuff like that. And... Um, you have Serena Williams teaching you how to improve your golf game and Gary Kasparov teaching you chess and people teaching you poker and music. Uh, Dead Mouse teaching you how to do um, uh, audio production for electronic music. These are the experts. Mm. And they're sitting nice. down and actually giving you real genuine instruction, useful instruction on how to do this stuff. And uh, they had a one day deal where if you were a student and technically I still was through a community college that my work sent me to, to get some stuff and go back. If you were a student one day, you could get the whole year for a dollar. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> That's a bargain. And I caught it. It was the middle of the night I was working. I, I caught it with like an hour and 20 minutes left on it. I'm like, Oh yeah, I'm signing up for that. So cool. That's awesome. So that was really good. Steve Martin teaching the art of comedy. Just, brilliant stuff if you think you'd be interested in it and you think it might be a good value like if you there are multiple people you'd want to listen to i'd say go for it, it it's it's awesome cool. um so i talked about tenant and save yourselves have you seen enola holmes on netflix no i've wanted to i saw the ads for yeah. it but i've not seen it, it yet. it's okay oh it's a glowing recommendation yeah it, it's it's okay. I'm going to bump that right to where it is in my list and not move it up. Yeah. It, it's, <laughs> uh, you know, it, it's not a waste of time. It, it's good. It's fun, mm -hmm. but it's a, it's more kind of, I mean, she's a teenage character and it's very much a teenager story, kind of a coming of age sort of story and a good one, but it's less detective, more coming of age. So. Okay. And that's with Millie Valley Brown, yeah. right? Yep, it's and Henry Cavill idea. plays Sherlock Holmes, her older brother. Oh, okay. Yeah, so it's good, though. Um, Helena Bonham Carter plays her mother, who goes missing, which is the mystery. Um, what else? I saw Psych 2, Lassie Comes Home, finally. I'm a big Psych fan, Psych being the old TV series on USA Network. Right, uh, right. So I finally got around to watching the second of the two. Never never got into Psych. Oh, I love it. And the main character is like such a, a, a smart ass. And I, I just, I love that. He's one of my favorite fictional characters ever. Oh, wow. Yeah. Okay. Um, been catching up on Lovecraft Country, um, Archer season 11, The Vow. I've been keeping up with those as they've been getting released. Um, okay. I talked about Deep Murder. I'm not going to rehash that whole thing. We talked about it in a movie chat or two. What a, what yep. a strange movie just wonderfully bad movie. Like it, in every way that you think the movie is going to be bad as you start watching it, it's that bad. And then they intentionally push it more. It's like snakes on a plane to the nineties. This is the same sort of thing, but to Skinamax films of the eighties, but a murder mystery. <laughs> so it's kind of like knives out, but set in a 1980s Cinemax late night movie. Like to the point where you think okay. the movie's going to be about them filming a Cinemax movie and then you find out it's not like it's, it's just that it's like, what if that were real? It's weird. Mm -hmm. It was funny. Chris O'Donnell. It was funny. Um, and then finally, Utopia. Utopia is a new show that came out on Amazon Prime. It stars John Cusack. And Rain Wilson from The Office plays Dwight Schrute on The Office, right? Mm -hmm. Yep. It is based on a European series that I think is based on a comic book or, any, or, or something. But anyway, the, the story is there's a comic book called Dystopia that predicted the Ebola virus. It predicted H1N1. It predicted a bunch of other things, but kind of like subtly in the background with like codes and, and weird little art diagrams and stuff. And 
So there are some ultra fans who have kind of latched onto this conspiracy theory and realized that whoever the artist has predicted all this stuff before it happened. And so now the sequel to Dystopia called Utopia uh, was found. It's never been released, but the draft pages were found. And so at this comic convention that pops up, um, the person who found them in his grandfather's attic is auctioning them off. And so different people go in and try to bid on it. And um, things kind of get out of hand because there's an organization who decided they're just going to walk in and take it at any cost. And then also try to go hunt down anybody who saw any of the pages during the auction. And you realize there's a whole elaborate conspiracy, like life and death level things going on. And so you have these kind of conspiracy nut geeks who are trying to hunt these things down. And yet also they're being hunted by this big company that, and in the meantime, this whole plague breaks out and rain Wilson plays the scientist who um, identified the plague and apparently maybe has a a cure for it. Kind of, sort of, um, it it's it's interesting and the weird thing is it kind of plays like part of it feels a little bit like a, a show on the cw network until you have like heads exploding and f-bombs being dropped and blood and guts everywhere and you're like whoa hey this is definitely not for kids so there's kind of that level between like you don't really know where it falls um hmm okay but it's it's strange and interesting, and I would recommend it. Watch the trailer, and if there's any way in which you think you'd be interested in it, I would say check it out. There's a Red Band trailer and a regular one. I'd say watch the regular one. It gives okay. a little more of the story. Sure, sure. And, you know, there was um, John Cusack was on Sunday today. I think it was not this past, not, not today, but last yeah. week um, for the interview that... Um, uh, they do on that one. And uh, I like John Cusack a lot. Me too. I think he's a great actor. Um, he's done some really good stuff. He's done some very, you know, off, off stuff. That's, that's still really good, but not mainstream. Um, so yeah, it's on my radar to watch now. I have not seen it yet, but, um, definitely, uh, um, I'm looking forward to checking this out. I, I would say it's worth checking out. It It's, Again, it's not going to appeal to everybody, but I think people like you and me, it, it'd be worth checking out. It's, it's brand new. It's only been out for like a week, I think. And mm. it's maybe... And Amazon Prime's done a good job episodes. of making some good stuff yeah. here and there. Yeah. So good production value and, you know, definitely John Cusack, good actor. Have you so. watched The Boys yet? I'm partway through season one. I have not finished season one. Okay. But yeah, I love that show I, too. Yeah, it's good. I would, Just, again, I haven't gotten back to it because I've been, yeah, the stuff came up. I, I would drop everything else and, and that, that, yeah. that show is. Mm. Well, it's probably next to my, my list after I get done with um, Raised by Wolves. So, mm, okay. Yeah. All right. Well, that's, that's all I've got. And I guess that's all you've got. Oh, we okay. did okay. 30 something minutes, 38 minutes. Sure. Sure. Yeah. So. All right. Well, that's going to do it for this episode of Random Chatter. We will be back next week with actual news on the condition. Well, on the condition there is actual there news. There is actual news. Because that could happen again. We don't yeah, I mean, make the news. We just bitch about it. Uh, talk about it. Just right. analyze it. We analyze it. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. I mean, it, it's been some small stuff here. Never nothing we could make a whole show out of. Yeah, I mean, there's some lightning round the stuff. Most relevant stuff recently has been the James Bond pushback right that was last week yeah um but you know again it's just one more pushback in 2020 it's like well it's 2020 well and i think by next week we might have more information about uh so someone in the the chat room i think it was joe mentioned um joe jr from our our discord community as well uh mentioned that regal cinema said they're not going to open up until 2021 at least um, based on the fact that the Bond movie has now been postponed to Easter of 2021. And if that's the case, that's going to th- that's gonna hit them really hard. So I want to look into that a little bit more and, and I think talk about that next mm-hmm. week because that's oh, definitely. a big, big deal. Um, I don't know. 
So it looks like yeah, I don't know how they um, and, even being closed. I don't know how they stay a solvent right. business because there's no revenue. Right, they're paying. They still have leases, and that's the thing. They still have the facilities, and they're still responsible for the leases and utilities and, and the upkeep and all that. Yeah, um, David in the chat room yeah. also posted um, a CNN article. Um, said that the New York Cineworld Group, um, who owns Regal Cinemas, said that they haven't made a final decision on it yet. So maybe by next week when we have hopefully some, some more news to cover, we'll have some sort of information on what the decision was. So we'll see. Otherwise, Thursday night, come join us on Movie Chatter, where we will be discussing the most recent version of The Invisible Man, unless we're not. Yeah, Robin. we're doing that instead of um, Happy, Happy Death, Death Day. Day. I'm I'm almost certain we're doing the Invisible Man, and the thing is, she's gonna say what? No, and then I'm gonna replay the video, <laughs> and then yeah, well, we have proof. We do so, have. Yeah, and I didn't remember either. We have. And proof. I went by what she asked. Like, oh, she's that's what we're doing. Yeah, that's okay. I'll talk to her tomorrow, but we'll get it squared away. But the Invisible Man Thursday night. It's gonna be about eight thirty p.m. Eastern time. We are going to be doing um, Random Chatter and Echo Base again next Sunday night at uh, 8 o'clock p.m. Eastern. And um, that's that's about it. Be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel. And if you like the video, please hit the like button. It would help us out a lot. Please hit the like button on any of the videos that you watch that you actually like. We're not asking you to lie. If you didn't like the video, eh, we get it. But send us feedback and let us know why. The best way you can do that is to join the Discord server randomchatter.com slash discord or you can just send us an email randomchatter at randomchatter.com we love feedback because it gives us a better idea of how we can bring you some entertaining content so always keep the feedback coming um so that's it lou thank you and uh, Larry, thanks for having me it was a good good talk tonight yeah. i enjoyed this good way to wind down the weekend now we have to go practice our, our flight skills and uh practice star wars squadrons a little bit yeah, ten thirty. I don't know if I should play. Yeah, no, bit, you should go to bed. I probably yeah, should. Yeah, you know, you're you're kind of old and it's way past your bedtime. So, <laughs> and tomorrow's my long day too. Tomorrow's my ten hour day at work. Yeah. Then why do so. we always record like Sundays? Because isn't Monday always I, a long day for you? It is. It is. Then, That's what we'd always done. Well, though. we can but, change it. We can we can, we can move things I around. I feel bad now. We'll talk about that later. Anyway, that's going to do it we'll for this episode. Yeah. Thanks for hanging out with us, everybody. Have a great week. Take care.